Okay, guys, uh, I wanted to start uh, a series on EVE Online. And to be totally upfront with uh, you guys on this video, later in the video, you may hear me refer to things as uh, time frame that may not actually be the time frame of the video. That's because as I was recording the initial part of this video, I was explicative deleted long talking about just simply things that uh, like the empires i am a lore lover i love the lore that's why i play no man's sky that's why i play some other games um and so i get talking about the lore about these uh empires to to explore but the empires uh have no impact on the actual gameplay or the tutorial and since this was actually this is actually a uh, video on the tutorial of this game. Uh, I really wanted you to uh, get a feel for the tutorial, uh, not looking at all these different races. <clears throat> so I'm going to quickly go through, dis uh, describe the races, try to shorten the length of the video, and let you guys uh, get into the tutorial, because the tutorial is kind of long. Uh, so this is the MR. Uh, they have a uh, empire built on uh, faith, so they are religious fanatics. You got the Mimitar, that are I always and and uh, continue to think of them like as in the expanse, like the Belters. Uh, they're the downtrodden. They're a republic, so it's a little bit different than the, like the Beltias, uh, but they're a republic, but they're tribal, uh, so. Uh, if they're from a certain tribe, you know, that's uh, how their government is kind of set up is through tribal republic. Uh, the Kaldari, which is more of a military state um, or a corporate military state. Uh, and then the Galente, which are a d democratic uh, republic state. So these, you know, the thing about the, the initial choices that you make um have no real impact on gameplay and i talked for a long time in the original video uh that you're even though you're just now seeing this video uh i'm gonna heavily edit it i talked a lot about these empires and they don't really mean much of anything uh the technology is neat so you here you get to choose uh to look at the technology this will talk about what weapons and and uh armor or preferred armor method or protection method that the ship uses uh, like for example the Kadari use uh, missile launchers that's why this popped up and then uh, they also use rail guns and they're more spin on shields whereas Mimitar they use projectile weapons like uh, cannons auto cannons uh, and you can see that with the here and they use shields but uh, the Amar for example they use armor they like their uh, energy weapons, so they like laser beam weapons. And uh, the Galente, they like their blaster weapons, which is more like... Um, mm, they also use energy, uh, but they're not quite as uh, uh, heavily... Uh, it still uses uh, ammo. Uh, is what blaster weapons do. Whereas laser weapons, they don't use ammunition. They use pure energy. Um, and they use drones a lot in the Galente. Um, and they are they use their armor. So, And then if you look at this, it talks about the, uh, uh, the empire as it's run. So they have a, a, a typical imperial enemy. So the Galente don't like the Caldari. Uh, but then they have a pirate enemy, and each one has a little pirate enemy uh, that's usually focused around your NPCs that you'll fight. But the Kaldari obviously don't like the Galente. Uh, the Mimitar don't like the Amar, and the Amar don't like the Mimitar. And that's pretty much what this revolves around. Uh, but other than ship look and weapons that you are uh, given, you know, kind of right out of the bat for. Uh, performing missions and you get rewarded um, 
certain weapons and armor and things like that, uh, you know, that will that will be what your your focus is, is what you're getting in reward for your missions. Uh, after that, uh, you pretty much start, if I understand it right, which I haven't gone past uh, the, I don't want to say the tutorial, but like the the initial uh, missions. Uh, it's almost like tutorial missions, but they're not part of the tutorial. Um, I haven't gone past that uh, to really explore and look and see how much of a prize you get after missions from other agents. Um, but I know you get some from some uh, agents. Uh, but the, th the key is, and we'll talk about the agents and all that mess uh, later in the video, but you know, initially it's just how your your fleet looks. Uh, these guys kind of look haphazard and thrown together, whereas these are nice and sleek. The MR are nice and sleek and pretty. Uh, the Kaldari are very uh, um, a little more sleek, a, a, a bit uh, so, uh, mostly symmetrical. I ain't gonna say totally symmetrical, but mostly, uh, but very militaristic. Whereas these guys are are more uh, asymmetrical, but sleek at the same time so they're they're kind of like the capitalist government and uh and that's pretty much it let's move on. Uh, each race they have three different races so like there's the the D dts the achura and the severe uh a lot of this just pronounces your um look you know which which look style uh, you'll see, and uh, the, the the Mimitar, you know, they have the Sibiestra, the uh, Vera Cori, I don't know, Vera, I don't know how to pronounce that one, uh, the Brutor, the Ni Kunki, uh, Kun, Kuni, the Kanid, and the Amar, uh, and then over here in the Glinta, you got the Jinmi, the uh, Intaki, and the Glinta, so... Uh, each each uh, empire has three different races you can choose from, but if you look, um, even within each empire, they have a distinct look. Like the Amar are very aged people. Um, they're uh, older people. Uh, you know, you'll see the age group in how they look. So uh, oh, that's the same one. So let's look at the Amar. They have some age to them. They look like older uh, priests and things, you know. Uh, even the younger race of them has some age features. Uh, and you can age your character that maybe has a little older look to them. Uh, use these guys to show you that they have more of a, um, just a moderate look. Uh, there's, a, there's an Asian race in each one of the empires. Uh, that has kind of Asian features, um, <clears throat> and you know you're not uh, pigeonholed into uh, how the uh, character looks like as far as their uh, complexion. You can always change their skin tone uh, to be darker or lighter. Uh, their hair color you change. All these things are are slightly customizable, but it will change your overall feature of the character so like um these guys are thin and and uh, kind of gaunty um you know kind of like the mr the mr are a bit gaunty but they're more aged and, and gaunty um wow the hair of this guy let me back up and do some do that yeah do some cornrows on him so you can see um his features a bit better um and like I said, you're not, you know, even though this race is obviously by, uh, by the way the lore says, uh, you know, they have darker skin. Well, all the races uh, can have darker skin. It, it, it doesn't really impact your skin tone. Uh, it's it's a lore thing, not a. Uh, uh, so I can darken the skin of this uh, Asian looking guy. You know, it's not. I didn't know you could get up from there. Did I do that up here? That's just, uh, I guess it's just kind of blended there. Um, but yeah, you know, you can make them darker skinned. 
He's got a bit of an Asian feature, but that doesn't change anything. You know, the Amar, I showed you the Amar and the Minmatar. The Galente, I think I showed you the Galente, Brutor. I mean, uh, the Kaldari, uh, Minmatar, and Brutor. Brutar is a Minmatar. But when I look at the Kaldari, they have Minmatar uh, the, of the features of the Brutor. They have these, I'll show you, they have these strong jawlines. You know, there you go. Um, so there you go. Um, because you just can't, you can't manipulate the character features uh, enough to directly represent, you know, any particular person or, or whatever. They have these constant features. Uh, the severe, they're all going to have, you know, if I, if I lower the chin enough, he's still going to have this strong jawline, you know. Uh, and that's the shortest I can put the jaw, you know. I can draw out his his uh, cheeks, you know, make him more Amar looking, you know, make him kind of a, a skeletal feature, makes him look a little more aged maybe, uh, but, but, you know, I mean, I can do, I can do quite a bit, but there's no, you know, I can pull, pull his face out and make it to where he has less, uh, uh, more of a roundy face, but it still has some features that are going to be there regardless. Um, you know, and that's that's just I'm just trying to now I'm just trying to make a a character. Uh, you can age him. You can see this it takes his gives him age lines. Um, not a lot. I mean, you know, it gives him uh, head uh, wrinkles and some of the. Stuff you can give him freckles. If you want to represent him like maybe you want him to be a redhead or something. Maybe you just want freckles because you know not a, not, a, not only redheads have freckles. I just I don't know. I went there. Um, scarring. So you want age scars. Uh, and and you know this is this is more of the the age scarring, not the direct uh, facial scarring. Uh, there's a, a by, under body modification, you actually have scars that you can put on them too. Um, so that's kind of neat. Let's uh, go back to, uh, let's give him kind of an eye color that's moderate. Let's see. I want it lighter color maybe. Let's make his eyes smaller. People smaller, I mean. Hair, I'm not big on the faux hawk looking things, you know, like this per se. Um, and you can see, you can, uh, so the root color can be changed to where he has two different tones. But I'm not, I'm not big on that either. It's just me, you know, it's just the way I like to play my character. Uh, that's a lot of hair for a part. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is the Elvis look, I, I, you know. If you actually know me in real life, you'll you'll know. My dad always has or had more of the Elvis look, so I think it's funny to see that in game because it's it's a very uh, uh, middle twentieth century uh, feel. Uh, but I'm looking for just a standard. That's a military cut, high and tight kind of thing. Uh, but I'm not looking for. I'm looking for more of the, just the standard. So there's one, there's kind of a standard here design. There's another, well, that's more of a swept back style. Uh, there's a part, a standard part. Uh, you know, some people are gonna be, <laughs> there's a Superman flip. I don't know, it's not really Superman, it's more of a Elvis style maybe. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the Heart, uh, just because that's what I like. Uh, facial hair, we've got beard, goatee, uh, the, the, oh, what kind of goatee they call that? They always called it something specific. Um, the, the, the chin beard or the, the light beard. There's your straight. 
beard, um, mustache, combination. This is very, I think it's funny because it comes down and it almost meets right there. You can see when I highlight it, it doesn't quite meet, but it's, I'm like, well, what happened to the one where there's like this thing coming down it gets all heavy and stuff like a Fu Manchu? I, I was looking for that when I first started playing uh, back in 2000s because uh, I want to say it's because I I was heavily influenced by uh, Mortal Kombat and I liked uh, Shang Tsung and I, I think my character back then I wanted him to look like Shang Tsung in the old day. Uh, so but let's uh, do kind of a gruff um, look. He is uh, so he's a part of a statist, but you know that's not we're not pigeonholed into you know the, the the way the military is either so i want this guy to be more like a uh, kind of like a smuggler or uh i don't want to say pirate um because if i was going to make a pirate i'd probably make a mimitar but let's say he's more of a let's say he's more of a uh and you can put uh, eye details uh, makeup eye makeup lashes um cheek color you can change his colors of his cheek <clears throat> his lip tones um, clothes and and by the way um doesn't really matter what i'm what i'm doing here it just uh, it'll sh i'll show you in a minute it doesn't really give you anything just absolutely worth i mean you're never going to see your character outside of what we call a capsule um <laughs> this is really more of just what they look like if you were walking around but you never are you're always in your ship you're always in your capsule um you can tell i'm kind of drawing from the han solo uh, style in fact i think there's a pant uh if if this race has access to it if this uh empire has access to it there's a pant that uh, looks specifically like yeah there it is like Han Solo's pants it has the stripe uh, I can't resist uh, and then the boots see they have the boots too so you know, I'm definitely taking yeah, yeah we're definitely doing like the Han Solo um, Alan Quartermain uh, look to it uh, in fact if uh, if I didn't want to just like see his eyes or whatever, I would totally like get him shades, and and that's where we'd be. Um, probably, probably something like that or this, you know, where he's got got the got the uh, you know, attitude look. I think that's fun. But this is what you'll see on the character anyway. I mean, this is it. Uh, you'll never see this again. Or if you do, I, I don't know how. Uh, I don't ever remember seeing it. This is how you'll see your character from now on. You'll see it in a profile, I think. Um, let's see, what are we going to call this guy? Um, well, you know what? I, you know, I, I, a lot of times I don't. I, I like to name the characters. But I think this time I'm just going to go with my... Because I've wasted a lot of time on character creation uh, and talking to you guys about this, so let's uh, let's do. Oh yeah, I forgot we get to choose our education. What this does, believe it or not, is it just starts you at a certain starting point. That's that's kind of it. There's like three different areas, I think. Um, it has no influence on your character whatsoever. Uh, you'll be able to train everything through each each of these um, but the I think there's different um, space stations that you can start at and that's that's all this does um, but I'm gonna start him with a war Academy uh, this is Explorer Academy and this was industry um, basically you get the same three choices throughout the each Empire but I want to say that like some of them um, you'll have combat then this one might be uh, more of a what they call a product uh, producer or a miner mining colony or mining you know uh, and then this one might be instead of um, 
industry, maybe it'll be uh, um, something else. You know. All right, so let's get in the game. I, I've I've wasted your time. New Eden, a universe brimming with possibility and rife with adventure. Only the most intrepid capsuleers can conquer its many wonders. Do you have what it takes to become one with a machine? To explore the far reaches of space, carving out a name for yourself among the stars? To become a titan of industry, amassing wealth, power, and prestige as you rise above your rivals? Or to prove your worth in combat? Cementing new alliances and vanquishing your foes on your path to glory. For the rare few, immortality awaits. With Air's Capsuleer training program, you become the architect of your own destiny. And they just sealed you in a capsule. And now you're waking up. Captain, I am Aura, your AI companion. I am here to help you find your way through New Eden. Welcome to the first day of your new life as a Capsuleer. I am now transferring your pod into a ship, provided by air as part of your Capsule. An unidentified vectoring escape route. Evacuation sequence initiated. Station hull integrity compromised. Should put a uh, seizure warning on some of this uh, video. <laughs> because uh, I apologize if you have like some epilepsy or something because <laughs> it uh, and it's not funny I, 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 you know, serious Captain, could, could this cloning facility was attacked before your capsule could be inserted into a ship I initiated our evacuation sequence before we reached the hangar to avoid certain death no need to thank me this baptism by fire is certainly not what Air had planned for your first day in a pod. Rest assured, I am here to help. I'm unable to identify our attackers, but they are not currently targeting our capsule. This gives us time to locate a ship. Your pod may be able to fly through space, but, like all capsules, it is unarmed. A proper ship comes with proper weaponry. We must scan the debris for a space-worthy vessel. Hold the left mouse button and move your cursor around to rotate the camera. Now, so let's get a better look at our surroundings. Right, so that's deep space. There's the explosions. Uh, on the, and there's another one. And I want I to... I think I, I have to look, look up and down, left and right. Oh, I gotta zoom out. Yeah, that's what it is. Ah, there is a ship there still capable of flight. An Astero, no less. A fine ship indeed. I have highlighted the navigation Oops. section of your display. Use it to approach the ship. I clicked it too soon, I'm sorry. I wanted her to keep talking. Because I kind of want y'all to see all of the, the tutorial here. It's... Board the Astero now. Okay. Select board ship. Seemed like I was pretty far away from it. Our shields took significant damage in the attack. The armor is also in need of repair. So 
this is the, so you got your hull bar, your armor bar, and then your shield bar. And this is your capacitor here. I believe the appropriate idiom for this situation is we're screwed. <laughs> they do throw in the fun uh, parts. Fortunately, the... the cavalry has arrived. Ships bearing air transponders are approaching our location. This is Balin Ferris, Commander of Air Security. All ships evacuating this cloning facility are advised to rendezvous at emergency coordinates. Several thousand civilians appear to have survived the attack. Let us make haste and join the fleet Commander Ferris is organizing. Your overview will display the ships in your vicinity. Captain, right. your vessel looks like it's seen better days. I'll repair you once you're in range. It may start talking at any moment. Commander which I Ferris, want to talk. were you able to determine the identity of our attackers? Negative, Aura. Their transponders were cloaked and their hulls lacked any identifying information. I'd wager this was an act of corporate espionage turned violent. There are a lot of people in New Eden who want to get their hands on his technology, whatever the cost. Thanks to Commander Ferris's repairs, our ship is almost as good as new. At his command, we will proceed to the emergency coordinates. All ships enter warp formation. at Air's designated emergency evacuation zone. We'll be safe here while we regroup. A spot well chosen. This location's cosmic abnormalities will mask our warp signatures from detection. But our appreciation of New Eden's natural wonders will have to wait. Captain, I could use your help. My sensors are picking up a strange signal nearby, but my forces are stretched thin defending the civilian fleet. The cosmic storm likes to play with our senses, so it could be nothing. But after that attack, I'm not taking any chances. Approach the signal source indicated on your display. So, you know, watch, I think I'll have to, if this ship gets in the way, I'll have to like fly over it. But it'll, the ship will automatically fly around obstacles if it can. But, you don't really have a collision problem in this game so if the AI didn't recognize it or or it was just too big you just fly through it, it it's kind of weird um, like none of the ast well the asteroids maybe I don't remember um, <clears throat> but I want to say almost all the celestial bodies that look like they have mass um, they give away initiating scan of unidentified signal to your ship, so your ship just flies through. Captain, hostiles inbound. Oh. And we're under attack again. We have to defend those unarmed civilian transports. All ships equipped for combat form up around me. Okay, so it says orbit Balin's ship. So I clicked on him, and we're gonna go towards him and orbit around his ship. My sensors indicate that these are the same ships that attacked the cloning facility. She changed colors since we're in like red alert type thing. 
Okay, what do you want me to do? Because it's still here. Several frigates are breaking away from the pack. They're targeting those civilian ships. Oh, okay. So can I attack them? Or with the enemy? Wait, I just start saying, I don't have any guns. Give me Thankfully, some Thankfully, our ship is equipped with a module that will boost our speed. Oh, okay. Sure. This is your ship interface. We're now within range. Okay. Lock your target. Oh, I already clicked the weapons. I do that sometimes when before I engage, I click the target weapons. Target confirmed. So automatically firing. But the the that's it, Captain. Let him have it. The uh, if you click before you target a, an enemy or whatever, it will eventually. Uh, well done, so. Captain. Now orbit, lock, and fire on the remaining hostiles. Uh, it will eventually stop preparing to fire. So if you don't ever lock on to the target while the module is uh, blinking, looking for a target, it just stops and just goes back to neutral. But I, I try to do that so that they all start firing at once. You can also link them. That won't let me bother shooting. Tells you to do that. Oh, I didn't orbit it. Headed toward into the other bad guy ships. Probably a bad idea. That one's got a lot of guns. I don't know if that's the cruiser or the battle battleship. Looks like a battleship. Can't click on it. Marvelously done, done, Captain. Combat can be such a glorious experience, especially when you're winning. Another hostile ship incoming. A cruiser this time. It's larger and better armed than those frigates. What an exhilarating way to test your combat abilities. All right, so let's orbit the cruiser and start attacking. The cruiser To ensure success, we must lock our target. It's like a medium range. Oops, I'm locking the wrong. That cruiser is traveling Relation. fast. At its current speed, it will reach. Now's your chance. Activate the webifier. Oh, I, I looked at it before she was ready. They're to trapped talk. in our web, Captain. So Eliminate. This slows them down. I wanted to let her talk about it, but she didn't. mouse over it it kind of changes that they it's like oh you know to do this okay well I'll shut up now and keep on going and I really didn't mean for it to I didn't even know that for sure that that's what I needed to do <laughs> oh. I don't know what this thing is either I'm sure it's I'm hoping it's going to tell me here in a minute I think it is a part of that. I've done one of these tutorials recently but it was like a week ago Cruiser versus a frigate. I think this is a frigate. I don't remember. Um, fight. It's not going to go like this. Yeah. Good job, Captain. You've got potential. Uh, to be Shit. quite honest. Two battleships breaking away from the enemy fleet. They're stopping the last civilian transport from warping away. Watch your six, Captain. They're bigger and badder than anything you've fought before. Captain, we can use electronic countermeasures, ECM to break the battleship's lock on the civilian transport. Doing so means the battleship will be able to target only one thing, us. There is no other way to save those civilians. They are not capsuleers like you. Their deaths will be final. Yours will be a learning experience. <laughs> All right, zombie fire knight to the rescue. Uh. 
Do what we can to keep the other hostiles off your back, Captain. Focus on your target. Once we deploy the easy... That's it! The fight... Oh, too late. I kinda... I kinda did it. I thought I was supposed to and... We're taking heavy fire, Commander Ferris. Once our ship is destroyed, the pod will soon follow. According to my calculations, our destruction is 99.99% certain. <laughs> uh, shields down. All... All is damaged beyond repair. Damn it. it. There we go. These bastards have me pinned down. I won't be able to reach you in time. You fought well today, Captain. This is a warrior's death. Luckily for you, it will not be your last. And I blew up. You are a Capsilia. For you, death is not an end. <laughs> it is simply the beginning of a new adventure. As always, I will see you on the other side. Welcome back to the world of the living, Captain. I hope your death was not too uncomfortable. <laughs> your neural data has been transferred to a fresh clone body. But before you stretch your new legs, someone very important would like to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Vesper Calatrix, Air's Vice President of Operations. Commander Ferris spoke highly of your courage under fire. You went out with quite the bang. Since your ship was destroyed in a blaze of glory, Air would like to provide you with a new one. The ship we found in the wreckage, by the way. Enabling your station services panel. Okay. You can now board the ship provided to you by Air. Try not to blow this one up so quickly. <laughs> I do hope the new vessel is to your liking. This particular model is quite popular with Capsuleers. Air owes you a great debt for your bravery and sacrifice. All right. And you see advertisements for all kinds of stuff. So in the, great, in, in fact, that I've thrown in an extra module at my own expense. Oh, that's nice of you. If dying means getting gifts like this, you should consider doing it more often, Captain. That was a joke. I prefer <laughs> you alive. You can access items in your hangar, like modules, from the Neocom. Uh, I use the hot, hot bar a lot more um, right here, but... Uh... So there's the item. Okay, so you get an armor repairer. And I'm going to go ahead and, okay, I'm going to show you this. Let's see what it says. Now, let's take a look at the module Ms. Calatrix has given us. Okay. A small armor repairer. An extremely useful gift. So As good. you well know, New Eden can be a dangerous place. Well, I'm sure you can fit the module to your oh. ship by accessing the fitting window from the Neocom. The fitting window displays your current ship's equipment, stats, and attributes. Now would be a good time to examine your ship's attributes. All right. Now, you know, when I Let's first went through this... Let's fit your new module in a free slot. I clicked on all this, and none of these numbers mean anything to me. Uh, because I'd never played, you know, or I hadn't played in nearly, you know, 20 years. So it was just like, oh, it's got 3.7 DPS. Is that high for this game? You know, it's hard to tell, um, you know, right away. You guys who play games a lot probably are just like, no, that's not very high at all or whatever. But, um, you know, you don't know what the minimum or the maximum is for a game uh, until you start playing it and investigating more. So, okay, so let's drag and drop like it says. Module fitting confirmed. 
Now, bring the module online. It Available appears you do not currently possess the skill necessary to use this module. Hardly surprising. You still have much to learn. I'll send the necessary skill book to your AI right now. Under normal circumstances, you would have received a basic skill set as part of the Air Capsulaire training program. Your training was violently disrupted, to say the least. Capsuleers learn skills, like flying ships or using modules, by rewiring their neural pathways. The skill book contains the mapping data required to perform such a feat. Skill books are consumable. Once we inject it into your neural interface, you will be left with nothing but a new and improved version of yourself. Augmentations such as this are one of the many benefits of life as a capsuleer. Absorbing the skill book's data rewrites the neural pathways in your brain, teaching you the skill. This process can take some time. Hover your mouse over the skill book and then select Inject Skill. We will begin the process by accessing the skill queue. Here you will see the air skill Sorry, plan. Sorry, click too soon. Skill plans provide capsuleers with a learning experience tailored to their specific goals. The skill needed to online your new module is included in the air skill plan. Now, begin training the skill. To speed the process along, I've gifted you with a skill injector. It's the least I can do, considering the role you played in saving thousands of lives. A skill injector. What a tremendous boon. I recommend activating it immediately. Your display is growing rather crowded. Now would be a good time to tidy it up. To finalize the skill injection process, be sure to confirm allocation of its resources, most commonly known as skill points. Apply a skill points icon to allocate those skills. Okay. You should Our close these windows as well. Completed. Okay, it says armor completed. Close the skills window to the applied skill points panel and the inventory. skill and the inventory okay now that you have the required skill try activating the small armor repair mod very well done captain your ship's modules are now online knowing how to train skills and fit modules is an essential step in your journey as a capsuleer but several questions remain who attacked the cloning facility and what were their motivations our investigation is still in the early stages, but I have two theories. The attack may have been motivated by simple greed. There's no shortage of competitors who would kill to acquire Air's groundbreaking cloning and capsule technology, literally. A more worrying possibility is that someone out there is trying to stop us from pursuing our research. While Air prides itself for being a disruptor of New Eden's tech scene, there are those who think we push the limits of innovation too far. The technology suppression laws in New Eden are draconian, if you ask me. I trust you will keep us updated on the investigation, Miss Kellatrix. Captain, you'll want to keep your wits about you once we're back in space. To that end, I highly recommend closing any unnecessary windows on your display. It would be a shame to lose our lovely new ship because you didn't see the danger flying towards it. <laughs> Close the fitting window. <clears throat> I wish I could do more for you, Captain. But I'm a busy woman and I have places to be. What I can do is put you in touch with contacts of mine who can help you grow as a capsuleer. Ah, a perfect opportunity to familiarize yourself with the Agency. The Agency is your window into New Eden and all the cluster has to offer. As a new capsuleer, you are the architect of your own destiny. You could unearth secrets hidden among the stars, or prove your mettle in the field of combat. You might even be New Eden's next great business tycoon. The choice is yours. The contacts Vesper suggests 
can be found on the career agent's card. I suggest you take a moment to familiarize yourself with what each agent has to offer. They specialize in business, industry, military combat, and exploration. No matter what path you choose, you will find a career agent that can help you walk it. Once you've decided which one tickles your fancy, as the saying goes, set your destination. Okay, all of these uh, career agents, the initial career agents, are all available in the exact same station. So it's not like if I pick one, it's going to matter. They're all going to uh, Air Industrialist, oh, I'm sorry, to uh, whatever this destination is. Be sure to close the agency <clears throat> before we depart. Close the agency. Okay, real quick, I'll look at the agency home menu. They've got agents that you can find throughout the entire uh, game, pretty much. Um, uh, these are mission agents, and these are encounter agents, exploration. We just happen to choose career agents. This is an agent finder. This is an agent finder. Uh, this tells you where mission agents are, but this is how to find certain types of agents. Uh, you know, if I want to find... You know, if I wanted to run mining, then here's all the mining. So it's kind of neat. Uh, you know, it lets you play how you want to play uh, instead of, you know. Stay safe out there, Captain. If our investigation uncovers any additional information on the attack, I'll be in touch. Much appreciated, Miss Calatrix. I await any and all updates with bated breath. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I don't breathe. Captain, when you're ready, we can undock and begin the next phase of our journey. I do wonder how you'll die next. <laughs> I suppose that is what ancient philosophers called morbid curiosity. When you're ready, click undock. And I'm going to click undock. Uh, we're going to head to the um, mission agents. And that'll be, once I, I go in the station, uh, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Uh, because we are over an hour in right now, and I don't want to overwhelm um, you guys uh, with, you know, a three-hour video <clears throat> on this game already. Now that no one is actively trying to kill us, I will teach you how to navigate in space. First, select the destination I've highlighted in your overview. Now... Initiate jumping to your destination. After that rousing introduction to New Eden, it's nice to be in space without the threat of imminent peril. Though this is New Eden, peril often approaches when you least expect it. So... I chose Kaldari because, okay, it's going to talk here in just a second. Once we're getting close. Okay, here it goes. Oh, it went ahead and jumped. Okay, so it didn't talk. Um, so that was a jump gate. Uh, Initiate jump sequence. See, there it went. It was lagging behind. Um, I don't mean to unsettle you, Captain. You've already proven yourself capable in battle. I'm certain you can handle whatever New Eden throws your way. And if you cannot, at least you are immortal. You can be reborn into a new clone body to try again. I believe this is what humans call optimism. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but basically there are, in each area that you go to, that you jump to, um, is a, it's pretty much a star system. Um, not all of them are star systems, but, uh, and there are jump gates. Sometimes there's one or two uh, that are connected to other stars. Sometimes there's a bunch. It all depends on, you know, what star system you're in. Uh, and these jump gates take you to a different star system. You know, you, uh, 
So you warp. Initiate jump sequence. And they call this. You know, that was a jump sequence. This is a warp, um, which I'm fixing to fixing to warp to this next jump gate. According to archaeological findings, New Eden was first settled by humans over right fifteen thousand years ago. Life must have been very difficult for those early settlers. Carbon-based life forms are stunningly fragile. With the right pressure, a human's vertebrae will snap like a twig. <laughs> Thanks. But <clears throat> you know, it she says initiating jump sequence after it's kind of over with, so there's a little lag in the AI uh, tutorial. <laughs> but uh, she goes away. Honestly, she's not there after we get reach our destination, to be frank. Um, <clears throat> I guess she's going to do it again. There it is, Captain. Okay. The station that houses your chosen career agent. Prepare for docking. That's, Select the destination that right there highlighted in your overview. Is somebody's destroyed ship? Because it's restricted access to the cargo container. But uh, anytime you see stuff in space that's different colors, uh, yellow is means you don't have current access to it. I think red is like it's hostile. But uh, okay, let me get back on. Here. There it is, Captain. Yeah. The station. Warp drive active. So we're gonna warp to the station. I hit dock, so as soon as we get there, it's gonna propel itself to the uh, station and dock with the station. So, uh, and we'll end the episode. I'll do a close um, when we're there. Uh, I don't want to keep interrupting the, the tutorial. I want you guys to see the tutorial because this is pretty much the only time you see the, the game talk to you as much uh, from from the next episode on you'll hear me talking a lot more um and i apologize that i didn't talk as much during this one um but i wanted you to see the tutorial uh, docking permission requested docking request accepted your ship's navigation to contact a career agent <laughs> you must access the agency which isn't entirely true because all the agents are over here in your um, panel, uh, but this panel isn't always up. So I think that's why she's, I th I, you know, the original tutorial, I don't think this panel stayed up. So you get to the mission, you get your Well career, remembered, Captain. Boom. I knew you are. would be quick to learn. Now don't be and shy. Begin a conversation with an agent. I'm and you're sure already they familiar you. with this. And if they don't, then they will simply have to tolerate you. Mm -hmm. You're already familiar with this particular uh, layout. So that's why, you know, they wanted you to go back to it and find your agent and everything, but they're here in the station. So it's, you can also click on the chat bubble here and do the same thing I'm fixing to do here. Uh, I am not going to click on this just yet. So I guess we're not going to, well, let me see if I do it. Um, <clears throat> what I like to do is start with the Explorer mission because there are five Explorer missions. Um, I do have a little bit of experience playing through the initial part of the game. Now, beyond these mission agents, I really haven't played. Uh, well, in you know, a little over 6, 15, 6, 14, 15, 16 years. So I'll talk about it like I know what I'm talking about up until we get done with these uh, through this playthrough. And then after that, I'm not really going to know much about it. So um, click start conversation. Missions provided by career agents offer a variety of rewards, including new skills, ships, modules, and money in the form of ISK. To begin the next phase of what I'm certain will be an illustrious career as a capsuleer, Accept a mission. Okay, I'm going to move her bubble out of the way um, and look at this mission agent. This is the Explorer agent. The reason I like this one first is because it is literally part of like a tutorial. 
on how to fly, how to use certain pieces of equipment, um, and stuff like that. Now, if you really want to get into fighting, obviously you're going to want to choose like the Enforcer or the Soldier of Fortune uh, right away. Um, Soldier of Fortune is my, I always go through all, oh, I say always, I go through, I have gone through all of these mission agents, <clears throat> and I think uh, it would do the best good to go through the Explorer, the two industrialists, and then and and do the uh let me spread this out so we can see it the entrepreneur is second because that's what you'll involve some fighting in that one then you do enforcer you're doing all fighting and then soldier of fortune it kind of culminates all the other things together so that's why i say for, soldier of fortune really could be the last one step uh if i had to put them in like order of what steps to do explorer lets you just fly the ship and learn how to control the ship uh producer lets you do things in the ship out in space plus learn how to make a few things and gain a little bit of, you know it's a very mild amount of isk by doing things like mining <clears throat> um the entrepreneur lets you start producing th some things and it also lets you um acquire things and do a little bit of fighting. Like I say, there's just, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of fighting. I don't know if, what I don't know is if the one that I've, the play that through that I've gone through is the same as what it's going to do in this race or this, uh, empire, you know, the Kaldari. Um, cause like I said, last time I played a Kaldari was, uh, almost 20 years ago. And, uh, I played with the, if you couldn't tell by what I've been talking about so far, I played with a Minimitar um, through the tutorial, and it was fun. Uh, I am not going to accept the mission just yet. I'll save that for our next episode. Uh, and you can see here I've been preparing, uh, accepting some um, uh, little seasonal gifts, but I, I just now created a character, so... It just now allowed it to where you can see that I, I have some gifts coming up. Um, what I am going to do is check. I'm going to leave her alone. I'm going to check my skill book. And the reason I do that is once I log off of this character, this skill book will continue to train. So there's an hour and two minutes for it to train. Um, and I, I like that about this game. Uh, cause some of these training, uh, cues, some of these, uh, skills take days just to train. And when, especially when you join, like if you join the, the Omega clone state, which basically is just the paywall <clears throat> for being able to access other parts of the game. Uh, you can play through a, a lot of the game, uh, for free. And, and, um, uh, back when I played it in the early 2000s, um, I want to say that I paid to play. Uh, it was like a, a, you know, it was like a, uh, uh, an account that uh, MMOs did back then. You just you paid your like $15 a month and you, you played the game. Now they're free to play, but to access some of the more interesting parts of the game, you have to pay the paywall and pay a monthly fee. Uh, but this is the skill tree. And I've talked for long enough. We will come back in the next episode and talk a little bit about, uh, we'll finish this tutorial. Once I accept the mission, I think she goes away anyway. Um, and then we'll, we'll go through some mission agents. We'll probably start with the Explorer mission agent, uh, do an episode on that. It'll be a short episode. I may even record that one shortly. And then we'll go through these, which are much longer. Uh, they, each of these are, I want to say 10 uh, 10 missions. Some of them take longer than others to do. Uh, some of them take on offline time. So I'll, I'll show you some of that. You know, you can basically be doing, you could, you could really theoretically do these like two or three at a time. Some of them, especially with some of the missions that you, you get. Uh, but okay. Well, it's been fire night 13. Uh, appreciate your time and, uh, have, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.